Bitcoin rallied up yesterday with it was within a hair of reaching a new all time high. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the technical analysis on BTC, where I'll be sharing my thoughts and opinions as to where I think the price action is heading next. As I get into today's video, if you do find it useful and informative, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and let's take a look at what's going on with BTC. So. Here we have Bitcoin paired up with USDT. We are on the one hour Binance chart here and you can see yesterday we got very close to that new all time high. We saw a high coming in here at 73,620. Dollars and 12 cents. It was really, really close to the 73,777. Since there, we did see a bit of a pull to the downside, and there are a few things going on here that we need to kind of address. So we do have ourselves a bit of a continuation pattern. Uh, this is signaling to us the idea that there's still a little bit more room to the downside, but it's not anything too major. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this, right? So straight off the bat, we need to address this area here, which was a previous resistance that can turn into support. This is now coming in and showing us an area of potential support at 71,190 to 71,587. Okay, now if we measure our distances from the wick low that we saw down here at 71,864, to the swing high, which we saw yesterday, coming in at 73,620. Move this down to this little wick high here, this little relief rally that we had. Um, that's coming in on a high of $72,978. Again, I'm just going to go ahead and move the fib chart here so it actually lines up with that wick. So I'm just going to adjust that down uh, to the $78 and... 90 cents that one right there okay the importance of that is to us to check the distances that we are kind of traveling and you can see there's this typical area that we would expect for a retracement to fall between 1 and 1.236 on the fib scales which would be 70,834 to 71,238 so it's actually looking pretty good right it's looking pretty decent let me show you why. Um, here we would have the idea of a three wave move coming down, finding support and then rallying from there. So this is actually a pretty decent place to be considering we've had really good movements to the upside, specifically coming up into new daily high highs, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, doesn't negate the idea of corrective patterns, but we're in a pretty interesting spot. Taking a look at momentum, the major concerns can be seen right here on the, on the chart and on the screen. We have overbought weekly daily daily, eight hour, four hourly, right? So we know on a macro scale, we're going to be looking for a cooling off, but we're still bullish because we've broken a lot of the stuff that needed to be broken. Okay. And so we're looking okay. We're looking good, but the market does need to cool down after overheating a little bit on the hourly chart. We're looking for upward momentum. Hence, we are potentially still looking for a potential rally here a little bit further, but you know, we'll kind of see whether this plays out. So on the one hour time frame, very, very interesting stuff. Now take that off, bring in the divergence indicator. You can see here that we had divergence, bearish divergence flagging as we had an approach that all time high or close to the all-time high. Basically, we had higher highs in price, but we had lower highs on the relative strength index. Okay, this kind of divergence is what is now playing out in terms of this correction. Okay, so we want to bear that in mind. We are still in bullish territory on the hourly RSI, so that's okay. We're not too concerned about that. Roll this off and bring in the MACD histograms, and well, things start to get quite interesting. Uh, and I use the word interesting quite a bit here because we can see some interesting stuff occurring. We've got a lot more selling pressure here than we do have buying pressure, okay? So as we saw with the relative strength index, with the higher highs in price and the lower highs on RSI, we can also see here that we had a lower histogram, okay? So we had two divergences, lots of different approaches to it, relative strength index divergences, histogram of the MACD divergences. These are telling us that there wasn't really an absolute appetite to continue pushing up. The reasons for pushing up obviously has a lot to do with the BTC ETH of uh, well, BTC uh, ETFs. Those have seen a significant amount of inflows, but we're not really seeing it from the crypto side, I don't think. If we take a look at the volumes, you can see here that volumes were pushing up a little bit, but they're still lower than where they were, right? So you can see divergences also here, higher highs in price and lower volumes coming through if I actually use the right tool for the job, um, which I always get that wrong, but that one right there. So you can see the volume was dropping as we went up in towards the all-time high. 
we can see the relative strength index was dropping as we pushed up to the all-time high we saw the histogram basically showing lack of momentum as we pushed up to all-time high and so we can see lots of divergences and lots of things going on in the background data that tells us that we're looking for a bit of a correction and of course the glaringly obvious is the stochastic rsi on all these macro time frames looking for a calling off as well but it's not all bearish because this is a positive place to be we've broken through a lot of the barriers that bitcoin was having on this kind of build up on this weight on this journey to the all time high okay so for now we're going to be looking for a cooling off on at least on the one four and eight hour time frames for some more kind of reactions in the market okay now if we go ahead and bring in our smart money concepts into the chart you can see down here as well there's a pocket of buying pressure right in the target range that i had drawn on here 70,833 to 71,235 and just lower than that there's a fair value gap as well okay equilibrium sits a little bit lower at 69 and a half to the 69 and 800 okay so we can see here some really good progression and a good change of character on this one hour time frame indicating that things now are more bullish and this kind of happened late on Monday okay so everything's kind of giving up quite nicely for xrp for, for bitcoin i should say um, and of course the, the wider altcoin market so we are looking for some interesting volatility to still continue on the one hour time frame my trading idea here would be to look for long positions not short positions at the moment um i, I would be looking at that for kind of in this lens you know we've got a couple of options if we wanted to go short on the market we absolutely could by putting this stop loss above the previous swing high and trying to target out that lower range for 1.5 risk reward ratio you can see it barely gets it on the lower end of that spectrum okay so it's not the most ideal instead potentially just waiting for confirmation of a ready or getting ready for longs would be to kind of see price action coming down into this previous area of resistance turn support and then go in for a tight stop loss lower than that previous uh, consolidation range and then go for a much better risk reward ratio and long position okay so i think i would probably be looking to hold out on on, uh, going short to prefer the long positions and um, so that would be kind of where I would kind of steer um, BTC trading activity at the moment that's just my thoughts on the data in the charts as I would see it but I think the opportunity really is to kind of snipe out a better long position for BTC and talking about trading we have an amazing deal for you today how does a 10% cashback bonus up to 2000 USDT sound that's right Blowfin is offering an incredible promotion but it's only available to the first 100 users so you'll need to act fast Blowfin a top cryptocurrency exchange is giving new users a fantastic opportunity when you sign up using the special link in the description you can get a 10% cashback bonus up to 2000 USDT in your futures account and the best part it's first come first serve basis so the first 100 users to sign up will be the ones who can claim this bonus here's how you can jump in step one click the special link in the description to sign up to Blowfin step two once you're in start trading the futures step three you'll automatically get a 10% cashback bonus in your futures account up to 2000 USDT if you're one of the first 100 users to sign up up. So what are you waiting for? This is a limited time offer and only the first 100 users will get this incredible deal. Click the link in the description down below, sign up to Blowfin and secure your 10% cashback up to 2000 USDT before it's gone. Don't miss out on this amazing offer from Blowfin. Remember, it's first come, first serve. So hit that link in the description and get started now. Good luck and happy trading. Okay, let's go ahead and roll this up into a daily time frame. This is where things really get interesting. Okay, so we were looking for a short position here. Okay, and this is the one we were talking about previously about kind of closing it out, letting it run just one more days if we needed to, but it wasn't looking the strongest. Okay, so this was an idea that we kind of wanted to kind of float by, but of course, as price started to move down, it started to show weakness and we wanted to lock in those profits some out of those positions anyone who's been following the uh, the detail of everything would know what we're talking about there now with this most recent push to the upside on our daily time frame things have changed quite a bit let's go ahead and just bring this into view here so before we were looking at the market through the lens that we had lower highs and lower lows going on okay and this was a continuation of everything that we had seen in the market for quite some time okay and as you can kind of see here we had lower lows and lower lows uh, sorry lower highs and lower highs and lower highs and so forth right but 
we did get a breakout on late on Monday. Now, obviously, I didn't put the video out on Bitcoin yesterday, um, but we can see here we did get a break above the previous wick highs, which was the main one of focus was the 29th of July. And of course, after that, we will be talking about the 7th of June and then all the way up to the 8th of April. So with this most recent move that we saw, we broke all of those. We are no longer in the that kind of problem of bearish territory and we kind of got the, the break to the upside. And the next problem that we have is that we are reaching double top scenarios. And the knee jerk reaction that we have seen at the moment is that this might actually be a bit of a flush out of the market to kind of capture some of the additional liquidity um, before actually having another push to the downside, i.e get rid of all those short positions and then actually take the price down and get rid of those long positions. So this could be a bit of a flush out at the moment. And again, we'll probably look for another flush out to the downside in due course as well. Momentum wise, you can see here, we are just up into the overbought. We, we aren't finished yet, which is an indication that there's still potentially more to the upside to go on our daily time frame. Okay. So it's looking pretty positive. I imagine that a lot of this is also trying to price in a Trump election win, maybe something to that effect. We want to keep that in mind. The other thing that I've noticed on the chart here is that we do see a very interesting uh, pattern emerging. Let me go ahead and snap in a trend line in here. So I draw this in quite aggressively so you guys can really see the extremes, but you can kind of see that top line in there. Okay, and then we're going to draw in the lower trend line here as well. And in fact, I might even address these areas right here to really kind of show you uh, what is going on in my mind. Okay, and that is a rising wedge pattern like this. Now, if you're into understanding the trading patterns and so forth, uh, this is not a good place to be. And the reason for that is that you have this kind of narrowing happening this end and it's wide this end, right? And so it's kind of narrowing itself up as we push on up. Now, breaking above this area is good, but we need to break this area in order to really kind of capture in uh, and kind of break out of this particular structure that's going on. My concerns here are that we have the initial kind of pushes to the upside here. We have the collapse to the downside, a push to the upside that has a higher high, but then the move to the downside basically creates overlap with all this price action. We then push up a little bit higher, and then we have another area of overlap with all of this area. Okay, this overlapping price action is not clean and it's not an indication of a trend. Okay, so the overlapping nature of the candlesticks tell us that this is a short term corrective pattern. And although we might hit a new all time high, there's going to be a potential flush that's going to liquidate a lot of people out of the market. Now, we know that the momentum is building up to a point where the market's overheating, profit is going to likely get taken off the table, and that's going to be a bit of a problem for kind of the potential for a bit of a, a flush in the market. Now, taking a look at our relative strength index, it is up in the overbought area. We are going to be looking for a calling off. Again, you can see the relative strength index is also bouncing around a little bit here. And the last time it was this high was the 21st of July. We saw what happened after that. Okay, so bear that in mind. MACD histogram is also still showing us problems on this daily time frame. Okay, so not only do we see that we have a rising wedge pattern like this, uh, we can also see that we have higher highs in price. And whilst that is going on, our histogram is narrowing down. At the same time as the um, higher lows is here as well, we can also see that our histogram is narrowing down on the low side. So we have a bit of a bearish problem. Okay, we don't want to be bearish on the market. There may in fact be a new all-time high soon, but I think it's going to be a bit of a trap. And the reason for that is we don't see enough sufficient demand coming in to soak up supply. And should there be a reason to start a bit of a selling scenario, then I think we are likely to see, unfortunately, new lower lows getting set on the histogram and a potential breakdown into previous area of consolidation. Now, for Bitcoin, I think that's not a super bearish place to be. Okay, I'm going to kind of be conservative and say that this is a really interesting 
resting spot between 56,911 and 61,937. And the reason that I find this a really interesting area, sure, we have a couple of areas that we saw dropping down lower than it, for sure we did. But every time that we've come in here, we've kind of seen a bit of a push to the upside. And we've seen it more often than not, right? We can see every time we've come in, we've kind of had a pretty decent push to the upside. There's more pushes to the upside than there are breaks to the downside from this particular range. So I take a look at it and I think to myself, well, actually, if we're going to see a flush, where's that price action likely to go? Well, I think it's going to come into this lower range here. Now, if I go ahead and just zoom out just a fraction and I bring in the VPVR, you can see see that actually there's not a lot of demand in this area, but there's next to nothing underneath it either. Okay, so you can see there's a lot down here in this previous area of consolidation, which I think it was a super bearish place to be. Uh, we were calling it out earlier on, but it's as time has progressed, it's become less and less likely, uh, which was 40 to 44,000. For now though, actually there's a lot more volume sat at 63,000. So if we're gonna see a flush, I think that's the place that we want to be thinking about uh, potentially going here for BTC, right? So taking a look at it all, it's, uh, it's definitely looking very, very interesting for Bitcoin's price action. I do think we're gonna be looking for a bit of a pull to the downside after this push to the upside okay so i'm going to go ahead and remove these lines from our histogram get rid of those and we're going to bring in our um, divergence indicator nothing on there volume profiles are quite interesting uh, so again you can see if i zoom out of this far enough this is the difference in volumes right um and i tried to make this as clean and, and as kind of obvious as i possibly can um, but you can see the volume that we have right now is lower than the volume that we had in 2023 okay and that's quite an important distinction because 2023 was a good reversal but since 2023 the market just hasn't really had that much interest in btc obviously you've got etf inflows and stuff and supply squeezes you know you've had a bitcoin halving event all that kind of usual stuff but the volumes are, are low they are kind of more 2022 volumes rather than 2023 and uh, 2021 volumes so we have to kind of bear in mind that the volume profiles are quite low they're not where they need to be to see significant breaks to the upside and we can argue uh, that our current volume is in fact even lower than it was at the beginning of the year as well when we were pushing up into the all-time high okay so if we kind of zoom in just on these areas you can see that our volumes so i'm going to use a yellow box for this i'm going to just try to snap in a little area here right this was the volume profiles we we're tapping into this upper range as we we're building up into the first tap into all-time high right so as we we're building up into all-time high you can see the volume kept spiking up let me pull that over here a little bit uh, so you guys can see like volume was spiking up into this area and then it really hasn't touched it as we're pushing this approaching this area now for a new all-time high we're not tapping into that same area of volume that we were looking at before so we just want to be mindful that it's great we can kind of get caught up in the hype sometimes a little bit too much that the market is telling us some pretty obvious signs that this might not be the big break that we're all looking for. It might be a new all-time high coming, but it might not be the kind of parabolic runs that we know are coming in 2025. Instead, this might just be a big trap to kind of trap out some long positions and actually we start to see that flush back into the market, look for $63,000, $60,000 before we actually get into the bullish market. The other thing I want to kind of talk about a little bit is with the US election literally just around the corner, we might actually be seeing a buy the rumor, sell the news event here, which basically means that people are buying up uh, X, uh, big Bitcoin and XRP and ADA and, and all these altcoins ahead of the actual election uh, going ahead. And, and basically, once you actually have the news, you tend to find it's a sell the news event. So buy the rumor, sell the news. These kind of things, they happen more often than not. So we want to be a little bit mindful over that as well. But for the most part, it's great positivity in the market generally. Um, but I'm not convinced that this is the, the one that we've been waiting for on a much bigger macro scale. But of course, it's just my thoughts and opinions on the data in the charts. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Join us in our free Discord server. We can continue the conversation down there. And if you guys haven't done so already, check this video out right here. It's not one that you want to miss.